Hey, young people. So the Washington Post did a pretty good documentary. I got through about half of it. And then instead of watching the whole thing, I'm just going to comment and, and uh, give my input on different things from a police perspective on how these Uvalde cops were just screwing us up. So I might make it two parts. This video is 30 minutes. So uh, you want to watch it, I'll put it on a playlist for Uvalde and uh, probably the greatest failure of cops. Not necessarily the greatest failure of cops ever. It's just the best documented proof of the failure. Remember, every time we see something bad on video, it happens 50 or 100 times across the country. We just don't know about it. So this was a great documentation of the complete utter failure of government and law enforcement and the lower standards and why you should never give up your gun or a right to self-defense. Here we go. Nearly one year after the slaying of 19 students and two teachers at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, victims, families, and survivors have not seen the kind of justice and accountability they hoped for. So I'm not sure what kind of justice and accountability you want. Uh, you, you can't allow government and cops to run around, kill people, give them immunity, say they have no duty to act, and then come back later and go, we want accountability. It's just not going to happen. We see instances of no accountability for law enforcement every day in this country. And we just ignore it. And now, because kids are killed, suddenly the parents want accountability. You're either part of the problem or part of the solution. And if you're watching cops do what they do now, and you're not outraged, and you're not calling for change, well, then you're part of the problem. We're here for the children. The responding officers who have faced no consequences, despite playing crucial roles in the disastrous... No consequences. Uh, I think the police chief's the only one that got fired out of all these people. No consequences. That's everyday policing. I've got video after video of earning the hate. Cops are killing people, spraying and praying, shooting innocent people. They even killed a hostage, and the court goes, ah, that's okay. They can do that if they're in fear of their life. Police response. You have to walk past all day. Nearly 400 officers responded that day. 400. But only a small fraction have been fired or suspended. Much of the attention has been focused on Pete Arredondo, the former chief of the Uvalde School Police Department. Okay, so he was way out of his league, had no business being chief. Uh, but again, when you start hiring people because of what color they are or what bathroom they use or what language they speak, you get incompetence and then people are shocked when they fail. He was fired from his job and has been repeatedly singled out as the primary culprit in the failed response. I now the reason why he is the main focus is it was his jurisdiction. It was his to police department. Most agencies are required for their jurisdiction. They're in charge of the scene until somebody says, we're taking it. So he was de facto in charge. Now he's claiming, well, when the state police showed up, I thought they, that's just a scapegoat. Every agency knows out there in law enforcement, if it's your jurisdiction, you have primary. Arredondo has denied taking on the role of incident commander that day. Yeah, because you because it went to shit, and you don't want to be the one in charge when something goes to shit. Had it been a success, he'd be standing in front of the camera with a bunch of cops behind him saying, it was a great law enforcement day, and I want to thank all my partners from the FBI and ATF and state police. It would be a big freaking donut fest. But when it goes to shit, let's just throw down some dude. The Washington Post conducted a months-long investigation to reveal that several other senior or supervising officers, not just Arredondo, played integral roles in the failures that day. The Post identified at least seven officers who knew there was shooting in classrooms, but failed to immediately stop the gunmen, even as evidence mounted that children and teachers were inside. Some were the first to arrive on the scene. Others were specifically called a- That's because they're too busy checking out their cool gear and they look tough with their cool helmets. 
their phones, taking pictures and selfies with their cool guns. Upon to intervene, all remain on the force. The investigation examines the role each of these officers played in the deadly delay. Through the review of post-action interviews and dozens of hours of body camera footage, we interviewed law enforcement experts, read multiple active shooter training policies, and obtained exclusive licensing and training records. The minute-by-minute -minute account shows how these officers violated decades-old police protocols. When she says decades-old police protocol, it, it, we've been known for years that active shooters are the exception to all other responses. You kind of throw safety to the wind. Your goal is to protect unarmed children, protect your freaking gun-free zone where you make a bunch of victims. And when children are involved, you throw caution to the wind, you grab the first guy, and you rush into danger and take the coward out, and you take him on. Yes, it's risky. Yes, it's not officer safety. I don't want to get hurt. I got you're gonna hear this one guy here talking about. I don't want you to get shot. Be careful. Be safe. That's what we got. A bunch of safety Sally pussies in the police department now. You wonder why the country's going to shit. To immediately stop an active shooter. On May twenty fourth, two thousand and twenty two. A Uvalde Independent School District officer responds to a call about a traffic accident involving a man with a gun near Robb Elementary. Have a caller advising you also just has a gun. At 11.31, video recorded by the funeral home across from Robb captures the officer driving towards the school a minute after the shooter walks onto campus. We One minute. So this isn't about police response, not to mention there was a school resource officer already on the scene. Lee identified seven distinct times that the gunman opened fire on campus during his more than hour-long rampage. The first burst goes off at 11.31 a.m. Wow, that's about the same time the first cop showed up. Shocking. While the gunman walks toward the school's west entrance. So they don't really talk about how he got in because the school teacher had a rock propped open because they'd go out there for smoke breaks. They don't talk about that. Uvalde Police Sergeant Daniel Coronado is one of the first four officers to respond to Rob. All these guys are long on the force. This is a police department where a bunch of guys have been hanging around for a lot of years. So they say 18 years on the force. I'm glad they don't say 18 years experience because this guy probably has six months experience, uh, maybe 36 times. Okay. Big difference between, you know, 18 years and one year experience 18 times. He parks near the school and takes cover from the sound of gunfire. Takes cover. At least three officers are there and they're hearing gunfire. Outside. Uvalde police policy states that ideally the first two to five officers should form a team. That's almost all agencies. This is standard almost countrywide on active shooter training. Team to enter the building and quote stop the violence. At least three officers, Coronado and two others from the Uvalde Police Department, are together just outside school grounds. So we have four officers there before he even enters the building. 77 minutes later, 400 officers later, they finally go in. An unlocked door, you're going to hear him talking about we need tools. Before the shooter enters the building at 11.33 a.m., in the post-review of dozens of hours of video and radio communications from the day, no one is heard explicitly taking command, not in those crucial first moments, and not for the entire 77 minutes the gunman was inside the building. Nobody wanted to take control. There were so many multiple agencies. Everybody was looking to someone else, pointing who, they, them, whatever, worried about pronouns probably instead of freaking somebody saying, give me two dudes, I'm going in, Who's coming with me? Let's go. Let's roll. Something didn't happen. You had SWAT guys there. You had rifles. You had shields. You had state police. You had all this great back the blue there, always telling us how they keep us safe and we should give up our guns. And only they should have guns because they'll keep us safe. Okay, you keep believing that. In room 109, 
Elsa Avila, a fourth grade teacher, hears a female voice saying, get in your rooms. She, she should have been uh, grabbed and got out of the building way, way sooner. They never cleared any of these rooms. They were too scared of the bullets. She immediately locks her classroom door. So we all ran to... Uh... The gunman enters the building and fires into classrooms 111 and 112. In room 111, teacher Arnulfo Reyes tells his students to hide under their desks. I just saw the fire of the gun. He shot the students. You can go the shooter listen. was trying to escape police by running through the school building. Coronado, thinking that the shooter was trying to escape police by running through the school building, tries to intercept him on the other side of camp. So, you've got a shooter. You know he's shooting. You have multiple officers outside, and they're still running around setting up a perimeter. Perimeter. Yes. So immediately, I, I jumped back in my Tahoe. So this guy keeps making him out doing what the first part I watched as a hero, and how he's trying to keep everybody safe. But he was he had so much going on. Hey, dude. Hey, dumbass, sergeant. You're supposed to go in. Grab guys and go in. If he's a sergeant on scene, he's in control of the scene, go in. He should have been fired too. And took off. After parking his vehicle on the east end of the school, but seeing no sign of the shooter there, Coronado runs back to the west side. What? In front of Coronado is Pete Arredondo, school district police chief at the time. So he's following a police chief now. Now he doesn't have to do anything because he's a sergeant. He's like, hey, the police chief's here. Doesn't mean that the sergeant can't say, hey, we need to do this. I'm going to do this. You got a problem with that. I'm doing this. Make him tell you no. Instead, you got a bunch of passive freaking wimp out there that nobody can make a decision and wants to stand up and save a kid. Guys, be careful! Be careful. This is the guy that, that's always worried about everyone else's safety. Kids are getting shot, and he's worried about, y'all be careful, I'm the supervisor here, I want to keep people safe. What a freaking loser. He might be in that building! Yeah, he might be. We got shots coming from the building, and you're still he might be? Inside rooms 111 okay. and 112, the gunman continues to fire. Giovanni, they're saying that he's possibly in the building on the... Oh, shit! Shots fired! Get inside! A little panic? You're at a school shooting, and you're going to yell, Oh, shit! Shots fired! Really? Go, go, go! A bullet travels through the walls and hits Avila in room 109 as she tries to calm her students. So this teacher gets hit two doors down, two rooms down from the shooter, and nobody evacuates her or gives her medical aid for over 40 minutes. And there's 400 cops there, or 77 in the hallway. And as I stood up and I felt, um, although no, I'm shot, I picked up my phone that I was shot right, that I needed help. Coronado enters the hallway. In front of Coronado are two other supervisors, Arredondo, and Uvalde Police Sergeant Donald Page. 19 years, all this experience, all this training. We need more training, Rick. They need more training. We need more experience. Yeah, that's the problem. On the other side of the hallway are a handful of officers, including two supervisors, Uvalde Police Lieutenant Javier Martinez and Uvalde Police Sergeant Eduardo Canales. You know, for a small police department, they got a lot of chiefs, lieutenants, and sergeants running around. What the hell are all these guys doing when they're not standing in a hallway at a shooting while kids are getting killed? The officers take up positions with their guns drawn. Martinez, Page, and Canales stand closest to the rooms. And they don't go in. This should have been an entry. Martinez. Page and Canales. This is an entry right here. We're going in. Instead, they hang outside and talk, and a guy shoots through the wall, and they run off. Stand closest to the rooms. 
Officer safety. The shooter fires several times in the span of a minute. They're saying they didn't know kids were in that room. There's video and audio of kids screaming in that room. So that's bullshit. I call bullshit on that. Martinez and Canales are injured by fragments of building material. Are injured by fragments of... Injured by fragments of... They got dust on them. They got sheetrock on them. Are you kidding me? Where's the injuries? I want to see the injuries. Fuck. Am I bleeding? No blood. Am I bleeding? Am I bleeding? Okay. Let's do this. Okay, since we got since we got hit with fragments of the building, I'm not bleeding, but I got hit with fragments of the building. Let's get a SWAT team. While the kids are in there trapped, unarmed, unarmed teachers, women and children trapped. You big back the blue heroes are outside with guns, bulletproof vests, shields, and rifles. Unlike some people, idiots saying they didn't have any of that. They had it all. For more than two decades, officers have been trained not to wait to stop an active shooter, according to police protocols. But even if they wanted to wait for SWAT, Canales, the leader of the Uvalde SWAT team, was already on the scene. Leader of the SWAT team on scene. No balls. Can't grab two guys and say, follow me, let's go. Along with Coronado and Martinez, who both had SWAT training. Three SWAT members on scene. Nobody goes to the door. It is unclear if Canales heard the SWAT request. I mean, Who cares if he heard a SWAT request? You can... As the call for SWAT is made, Canales walks out of the hallway and talks to Sergeant Juan Maldonado from the Texas Department of Public Safety. Oh, public safety. Ooh, that's the state police. Texas Rangers, those guys are good. Maldonado, the first state police officer disciplined after the massacre, was given the option to resign. However, records obtained by the Post show he started at the Zavala County Sheriff's Office. So after they told him he was going to be fired or quit, he got a job at the sheriff's office. Shocking. Let's just move all the blue, back the blue brothers around with their guns that are going to protect you and keep you safe. Office part-time in April. He's in the class. Fuck. Oh. Everybody, I got shots fired. So we're going to be in the, uh, the building, the west side. Dude, we got to get in there. Okay, so the guy says we got to get in there instead of saying, dude, let's go. I'm going in. Get on me. Either I'm leading this or I'm following somebody, but we're going in. Nobody had the balls to do it. Get in there. Just keep shooting. We got to get in there. Inside, Martinez approaches the classrooms two more times. This guy at least tried. Nobody followed him to back him up. They let him go out there by themselves. It's a school. It's a school. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're going to assume there's kids in there. The shooter fires again. Now, he's a lieutenant. He could have easily ordered a bunch of people, follow me. So I'm not giving him a complete pass. He did more than everyone else, but the standard is so low. Who the hell cares? Nobody went in. Shortly after, Canales asked for help over the phone outside. Yeah, the guy's fucking shooting. He's in a classroom fucking actively shooting. A lot of cops outside with their guns being safe. Keeping you safe. Probably looking to write a ticket. Because that's what they're good at. Rob school. Just give me your heads up. Maybe y'all could... The more help, the better, you know? Canales goes back into the school. Martinez attempts to reach the classrooms one more time. No one else follows Martinez. He's a lieutenant. Why ain't he ordering people to follow him? Don't give him a pass. He eventually retreats. We knew at we knew we had to get in. Mm -hmm. We we had to get in somehow. We had to. Yeah, you knew it, but nobody did it. Big deal if you knew it. Get in that door. We just couldn't. We we didn't have the tools. Tools? The door was unlocked. 
Remember, they waited for a breaching tool and it was unlocked. They didn't use it. Martinez is pressed by investigators to specify which tools officers needed, but he does not provide examples. Because he doesn't have an example. He's just coming up with excuses on why I didn't go in, why I was a coward, why I didn't take charge, why I'm an utter failure and I like to run around with my badge and claim that I'm a big tough hero cop and yet I'm scared to go in and deal with a dude with a gun. He does not attempt to approach the classroom again. In Page's post-action interview, he said he told Arredondo they needed rifle-rated shields, which provide meaningful protection against an AR-15. So you need rifle-rated shields. You're the police. You're getting paid. You have a vest and you have guns. Meanwhile, you have gun-free zones at a school and you have teachers, women and children trapped in a room where the guy is shooting them. And you're saying we need rifle-approved shields. What a bunch of cowards. I told him at this point, he's waiting at that door. We need we need some rifle shields. That's the only way we're gonna we're gonna even make it to that damn door. Gotcha. Page told investigators Notice the cocky and proudness during this interview. Listen to this guy's interview on how proud he is, on how tough he is. That hey, I was thinking we need to make it to that door, but we need the proper equipment. So what if the kids are getting killed? We need Equipment. I told him at this point, he's waiting at that door. We need we need some rifle shields. That's the only way we're gonna we're gonna even make it to that damn. Door. I'm not even sure you could carry a shield unless it was made of chocolate covered donut shield. Door. Gotcha. Page told investigators that he suspected there were children in room 111 and 112. I mean, uh, so we didn't know there were kids. As much as he was shooting, mm -hmm. I mean, he had been shooting at something. But he did not attempt to go to the classroom because the officer's positions were what he called a fatal funnel. Okay, this is where they're trying to get into to cop legal officer safety talk. Fatal. All schools are fatal funnels. They're made to funnel students to classrooms. Make use of the space. The whole entire school, when you're doing school training and entry training, it's all about is a fatal funnel. You know that. You ignore all that and go to the threat and neutralize because if you don't, he's going to keep killing unarmed kids. That's why cowards go to schools. If you don't shoot them, they're going to keep killing. Or a doorway where officers can be easily ambushed. I'm okay with dying, but I ain't suicidal. You're an idiot. I'm okay with dying. I ain't suicidal. Wow, he's really tough. Wow, he sounds really smart, Rick. Why are he sounds like he knows what he's doing. Where officers can be easily ambushed. I'm okay with dying, but I ain't suicidal. I, mean, I got you, man. I hear you, man. I got you. I, I'm, I'm with you, brother. We ain't got to die. It's our safety. Screw those kids with no guns. That's their dumbass fault for not having a gun. We got guns. We got to take care of ourselves, man. I hear you, brother. Sickening. According to experts, Officers are taught to stay out of the fatal funnel in most circumstances. But during an active shooter situation, training instructs officers to stop the threat, placing their safety second. Training also states first responders should not approach with reckless abandon for safety. Nearly four minutes after... See, that's how you write policy. When they threw in this little first responders, we does not suggest... Reckless abandonment for safety. Well, exactly how is how can you enter a dude shooting safely? You can't. You can't. You're getting shot at. You minimize, you try and take cover, you use your tactics, but it's not safe to go after somebody shooting. But this has to be put in here. Why? So when cops are cowards and they don't go in, they can say, I was re I was complying with policy. Policy says I shouldn't go in with reckless abandon for safety. Therefore, I had safety. Therefore, I complied with policy. Therefore, I'm a good guy. Bullshit. Did not approach with reckless abandon for safety. Nearly four minutes after Coronado runs from gunshots in the hallway, he announces over the radio that the shooter is barricaded. After he runs from the gunshots. On the west side of the building, uh, he's contained. We got multiple officers. He's contained. He's contained. We have contained. 
This is success and the new blue line heroes. We have a guy in a school with kids and we're bragging that he's contained. So he's going to kill all the kids, but we got him contained. He's not going to get out you know, unless he comes out and points a gun at us. Then we'll have to move for officer safety and let him get away. Outrageous cowardness on display. Inside the building at this time, he believe he's uh, barricaded in one of the one of the offices. Messed up is still shooting. He is the first to radio this message, according to a review of body camera footage and available audio. The difference in... Look at these cops standing around. You would think this is a break at a gun range or training, and there is no threat. When this, right here, this photo, there are kids being shot, bleeding, dying, teacher shot, Kids trapped in a room with one kid with a gun. And this is back the blue until it happens to you. Response between an active shooter and a barricaded one is whether the police immediately stop the suspect or wait for backup, according to experts. In an active shooter situation, an officer assumes the suspect's intent is to kill, while a barricaded shooter is contained and not actively presenting a threat. Okay. How is a guy shooting not actively a threat? A barricaded subject could become an active shooter if they open fire. Uvalde School Training states that time is the number one enemy during an active shooter response. Coronado tells investigators... Look at this guy. Doesn't even put his vest on. State police. Those guys are good. Investigators ...that he called it a barricaded subject because he didn't see any visible signs of injuries. You don't see any bodies. Yeah. You don't see any blood. You don't see anybody yelling, screaming for help. Those are motivators for you to say, for hey, sure. Sure. get going, move. Really? Notice how this guy is still got a hero complex that he did nothing wrong and that he actually thinks he did a good job. But if you don't have that, then slow down. Mm -hmm. But he had heard active shooting nearly four minutes before he described the suspect as barricaded. The, the police keep claiming that in videos we see them, a lot of them in their, their body cams are saying, no, there's no kids in there. Some are saying, yes, there are. And some, no, it's too quiet. There's nobody in there. I'm like, hello, we're in a lockdown. Don't they know what we do in a lockdown? We are quiet. Texas Department of Public Safety radio communications show this message of a barricaded subject is repeated over and over again, at least 10 different times according to the post review of available audio. This is what you call, we want to repeat to justify not going in. If we can say this a lot, then we're covering our ask and we're following protocol for barricaded suspect. So let's say barricaded suspect a lot. Uh, no, ma'am. He's just barricaded no, in the building. No description. He is barricaded at this time. And he's barricaded. Let me give you my definition of barricaded. An armed coward goes into a school to shoot kids. And he's locked in a room with kids. And he's killing them. No, no, Rick. Barricaded suspect means that we wait for the SWAT team. Okay, you cowards. He, he is barricaded. He is barricaded. Is barricaded. Subject barricaded. Is barricaded. Subject is barricaded. He's still barricaded. Is barricaded at the school. This narrative was so widespread that anxious parents waiting at the school started hearing. Remember, they were arresting parents who wanted to go in unarmed and save their kids. And the blue line heroes were arresting the parents to prevent them from saving their kid. I just can't believe people forget so easy. Hearing it. I was like, well, what's going on? I was asking everybody, like, what's going on? And that's when they started telling me that there was a shooter that was inside the, the school. And that's when my heart started racing. I said, no, no. Then that's when the rumors started there. They shot some officer and that he was barricaded in one of the rooms and they have him there. And no one has radioed that they have command. There was no one in there calling one person calling calling shots. It was if someone ha ha had a friggin' idea, we went with it. Yeah, the problem was none of you dumbasses had any idea but hiding in officer safety. That was the only idea. That's the problem. 
dipshit. Coronado asked Uvalde police dispatch for equipment and backup. Any, any available unit, go ahead and bring shields uh, from the PD police. Can you contact DPS as well? I'm sure they're aware. This is what you call, I don't know what to do, so I'll just hide where I'm safe and I'll get on a radio and act like I know what's going on and I'm making decisions and I'm in control. This is just fake play power. Equipment do you need from the PD? Tip for whatever we have, we're definitely. I mean, listen to this conversation. There are kids trapped with a guy shooting them and bleeding and dying right now. And listen to the context of these conversations. We're gonna need some flashers, flashbangs if we have any. The non lethal munitions Uvalde police brought would never be used to confront the shooter. Coronado's body camera picks up an officer. That's a key point. He needs this equipment. When they get it and bring it 77 minutes later or however long it took, they never use any of that stuff. But it sounded good that we need it. Confirming with school administrators that students are likely inside the room with the shooter. 422, the unit, the classroom should be in session right now. The class should be in session, Ms. Miller. Standing around knowing there's kids trapped. All right, I'm at 30 minutes. I'll make a part two.